11 meeting of the Town Council to order. I'd ask the clerk to take the roll. Council Chair Sherman? Here. Council Guvenali? Here. Councilor Jordan? Here. Council Lennon? Here. Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor Swift Payada? Here. Councilor Walsh? Here. Uh, please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, town Council reports and correspondence. Uh, Jessica. Uh, yes, we have a vacancy on the uh, Th Thomas Memorial Library uh, Board of Trustees. So I would encourage anyone interested to apply online. And the deadline is April 20th. So we hope to hear from citizens who would like to become involved. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. Anybody else? Okay, uh, this is the first opportunity this evening for citizens to discuss items that are not on tonight's agenda. If anybody would like to discuss an issue not on the agenda, please come forward, state your name, and you have three minutes. Okay, seeing none, uh, town manager's report. I'll pass this evening, thank you. Wow, moving right along. Uh, we have uh, minutes from our meetings held on March 14th and March 21st of 2011. Do I have a motion? Move to accept. Both. Second both. Okay. We've had a motion that's been seconded to accept both sets of minutes. Mm -hmm. Any comments or questions? All those in favor of the motion. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Sarah, I'm going to turn to you in a minute uh, uh, as finance chair, but at, at least according to the agenda, we have the first opportunity for the public to comment on the uh, fiscal year 2012 budget. Would you like to give an introduction first, or, or what does the council think? We, should we take comments first? Any? I'm happy to introduction. Introduction. Sure. That okay, answered. that might help. Okay, I apologize for reading it. I wanted to make sure I got it all in. I'd like to note a few trends and observations in setting forth this budget for our citizens to review. The municipal budget totals $8,916,379 for fiscal year 2012. That is 396,692,000 or 4.4% increase over last year. 75% is for added maintenance of buildings, roads, and equipment, and 25% for employees, which includes a 2% salary increase for non-union town employees. The town manager has aptly called this budget taking care of assets, and it does, investing modestly in buildings, road maintenance, drainage, and a bite into the sizable infrastructure needs at Fort Williams Park. I applaud his efforts as well as department heads, town staff, and members of all of our boards and commissions in shaping a budget that is simultaneously frugal and forward-thinking in preserving our town's assets, thus avoiding inevitable disrepair, which costs far, far more down the road. Of note, there seems to be no appetite in town for a mo movement toward fee for use, proposal for parking fees at the fort, paper throw at the transfer station, or any reduction in hours or services have all been met with a resounding no from the citizenry. As such, we find ourselves facing a modest tax increase to maintain the current upkeep and services we currently offer. To be specific, the proposed 2012 municipal tax is $3 more than the FY209 for a home valued at $300,000. Turning to the school side of the ledger, the school board has set forth for our review a budget of $21,124,690 for fiscal year 2012. That is $447,719, or 2.2 percent increase over last year. This constitutes a maintenance budget. Little added or taken away save small adjustments as recommended by the school principals and the leadership team. Federal and state funds fell off sharply this year, thanks to prudent planning and a unified effort from everyone involved in school financing. We will get through this first cliff year relatively unscathed. Gratitude goes to Dr. Murphy, the school board, the leadership team, and especially the entire faculty and staff for agreeing to a conservative salary agreement, making this very modest budget possible. Our district's efficiency and high achievement has not escaped public notice. 
John Podesta's Center for American Progress 2011 study ranked Cape Elizabeth the highest achieving district in the state with below average costs and a number one rank for return on investment scores. In summary, all budgets taken together and adjusted for revenues require a 1.9% tax increase overall or $85 additional dollars for the medium home owner. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. And uh, for those of you who've looked at the agenda later this evening, the council will be voting to set the budget for a public hearing on April 25th. But in keeping with our communications policy, we wanted to afford members of the public the opportunity tonight to offer comments on the budget. So if, any, if anybody at this point would like to approach the lectern, you're certainly welcome to offer comments on the proposed budgets. Oh. Hi, Jan Fishbein, Hunts Point Road. Um, just wanted to congratulate you on both the municipal and the school budget. I think if you read uh, the Portland Press Herald, you see articles in the paper almost every day uh, talking about major challenges in other communities in Cumberland County, uh, major tax increases being considered, and or major cuts to services. And the fact that you've been able to come up with a budget is uh, you know, a good uh, testament to great planning in the past years, uh, being careful about setting things aside, uh, supported very much by our one town concept, which uh, creates great efficiency, and obviously also is a tribute to the great work of Dr. Murphy, and thanks to uh, the teachers as well, and the faculty for agreeing to a very reasonable uh, contract. So congratulations, this looks like a great outcome, and I hope uh, the community supports you. Thanks. Thank you, Dan. Would anybody else like to speak? And, and if there are others, if you'd be willing to line up so we could uh, uh, keep things moving. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jana Zimmerman at 81 Oakhurst Road, Cape Elizabeth. And I have two kids, one in first grade and one in um, eighth grade. And I wanted to just um, support the school budget. Hope that you'll do the same. I think that this process, this is one of the first years in which I've lived here in nine years that the process has been um, free of rancor and more of a problem-solving approach, a solution-based rather than divisive in our community, which felt really good. And, um, and I think it shows, um, like Dr. Fishbun was saying, um, everybody coming together and trying to figure out what's going to work. We also have a superintendent who I wish would consider staying on, that came up with one budget. And it was a fact, you know, like just a data-based budget. Here's where the schools are. Here's where we need to be. How do we get there? And I really appreciated that because it wasn't misleading. It didn't make you think that there were three alternatives or five alternatives or something. There's one. So I would appreciate your support on that school budget. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak? All right, I'll close the uh, public commentary portion of uh, tonight's discussion on the budget. Uh, Sarah, do we have a motion? Um, <clears throat> item 62-2011, uh, I move that we send the proposed budget as set forth in our packet and described in my introduction to the town council um, for a public hearing to be scheduled on Monday, April 25th, 2011 at 7.30 p.m. in the Cape Elizabeth Town Hall on the proposed general fund. Seconded. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? Ann. I, I just had a question. I just wanted to make sure it's the, the numbers that we're looking at here on the front page of our packet, correct? For, for anybody who wanted to look online, you know, to see what all the numbers were. That's all. Uh, yes, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion? Yeah, the motion carries. Thank you. Item 63-2011 uh, relates to the uh, special funds 
uh, budget numbers. Sarah, would you like to make a motion? Uh, yep, I move that we set for a public hearing the special fund budget as set forth in our packet on, online um, for a public hearing to be scheduled Monday, April 25th uh, at 7.30 p.m. in the town hall for uh, citizen comment and uh, council vote. Seconded. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Any questions or comments? Discussion? Just quickly. Yes, Frank. Both for this budget as well as the preceding one we voted on, on the 25th, the town council's going to vote to approve or disapprove, correct? So unlike our procedures where we try to have a vote following the, following the uh, public comment, because of the schedule this year, it's just not possible. I think it's worth noting that. No, and I appreciate that, and that is why we uh, invited uh, public comment tonight. Um, but certainly if people want to provide input, they can do, certainly do so by email prior to April 25th. Right. Sarah. I'd just like to remind everyone that the referendum vote is on May 10th um, in the high school gym from 7.30 a.m. to 8 p.m.? 7 to 8. 7. 7 a.m. 7 a.m. to 8.30 p.m., so don't forget to vote. And, and if I could add to that, just to clarify, that's just for the school budget, but then there will also be um, the vote for Larry Bliss's senatorial seat on the same day, just so people know. Yes, Jim. And just a, a point. Um, public input has been asked for throughout the creation of these budgets as well. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to note that while we had public comment this evening, prior to these numbers getting to us in their final form in both the, at the school board level but also at the council level, we've had opportunities for the public to weigh in. So I just want to clear that up, make sure that there wasn't some feeling that this was the first time <laughs> it wasn't clear. Right. No, that's a very good point. Thanks, Jim. <clears throat> Any other comments? Okay, we have a motion then on item 63-2011, and it's been seconded. All those in favor of the motion? The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 64-2011 uh, relates to roosters. Uh, the town council last year referred to the planning board a request from a citizen to consider whether roosters should be banned or otherwise regulated in residential areas. The Planning Board has provided a report and has recommended that the issue not be dealt with in the zoning ordinance, but instead be dealt with in the noise ordinance. Uh, I do see that we have Jim Hubner here from the Planning Board. Uh, it might be helpful for the Council, if, if you're willing, to provide us just with a brief sure. explanation as to how we got to this point. Yes. Just a point. This is a. This again is another example of the trial that we're using with the planning board, and having more communication between the different boards relative to work that is underway. And before Jim Hubner begins, Jim Walsh is the lectern pointed that way as part of our new communications policy too? Because <laughs> uh, it seems like. No, I it just. It's, no, I, maybe the speaker could, but don't crack your egg. Um, You've got to be careful. It's yeah. not, not hard-boiled. I, I thought of this at the last minute. All right. Mr. Hubner. <laughs> Keep my hands off there. Um, I did want to bring this and add a little levity to the situation of which actually the planning board took very seriously. Um, the, we started debating this not uh, several months ago, and as you said, it started with a request from a citizen and that particular incident was actually uh, solved by the citizen and the neighbor with, uh, and there's been no problem since that, but it had, its, it had some inertia and it kept on going. We had uh, four workshops. We had two public hearings. Uh, at the first public hearing, there was enough debate that we went back and said, well, let's think this thing again. Um, that we, we debated long and hard on this, whether we had some people wanted it in the zoning ordinance to take care of it that way, and some, some people did not. Uh, and in the end, the last planning board public meeting, uh, as it says here, we uh, defeated, or I, I should say the, the, the part of the amendment to make it 
uh, limit the lot size, make it part of the zoning ordinance, was turned down. But the uh, another motion uh, to recommend making it part of the noise ordinance did pass. So that is the recommendation to make it like a, a barking dog. All right, take care of it that way. Um, so in a nutshell, in an eggshell, that is it. I don't know if you have any questions for me. I didn't want to belabor this subject. Thank you, Jim. Does anybody have any questions? Caitlin. Yeah. So how would, if I have a problem with my neighbor who has a rooster, how would it then be solved as following the barking dog ordinance? Do you, I mean, you can't train a rooster to not no, bark. No, like you, you can't. Train and we've limited uh, a farm such as yours would be exempt. Commercial farms of 100,000, I think I believe it's 100,000 square feet or larger, is exempt. Even if you, the neighbors were complaining, they, they would not be part of, you would be exempt from that part of the ordinance. Right, but there's other people out there who, you know, live in Cape Elizabeth who enjoy the fact and the, the way of life that you can have a neighbor or be a small household and have chickens and roosters, you know, to live with your chickens because... <laughs> <laughs> because it's healthier. <laughs> um, you know, so th it's a way of life that we, I mean, I would think would be a, a thing to preserve here in, you know, Cape Elizabeth, the, the rural town that we want to keep. So how would it be for a, a, you know, an average household lot? How would the problem be solved for them? Um, I would have to go back and look to see what the ordinance says about decibel levels at the property line. Uh, I, I just don't have that on the tip of my tongue. It would have to be uh, written as a, written up. That's good. But uh, that's one of the reasons we, uh, the 40,000 square foot lot limit was uh, voted down because we did not want to limit uh, to larger tracts of land. Now, on a personal note, I live next door to a rooster. I love it. It doesn't bother me at all. And, um, but I can't, I'm not everybody. So uh, there will be people, obviously, that complain, which is what started the whole thing. And, and since you love it, maybe we're up past your bedtime. You need to <laughs> get home soon to wake up with a rooster. But uh, actually, all kidding aside, uh, the town manager could address the issue uh, about how we deal with it under the noise ordinance. We receive, uh, thank you, uh, David, we receive two or three uh, complaints a year. Uh, other than encouraging neighbors to work together, there does not appear to be any enforcement mechanism under the current ordinances uh, to stop noisy roosters. Okay. C could, I, and. could I ask a question? I'm not f familiar enough with the, the barking dog ordinance, the noise ordinance. What is, do you, can you give a very brief overview of what yeah, the I, I didn't bring the ordinance, ordinance with me. Thank you. I didn't interrupt you. No, no. I didn't bring the, the ordinance with me, but the, the, the barking dog ordinance relates to barking dogs. Uh, it doesn't relate to... So it specifically it mentions yeah, it dogs. To, to other animals. That is true. We, we debated that. It does not... Presently, with no changes, roosters, there's nothing legally you can do about it. So does the barking dog... <laughs> I'm sorry. This yeah. just seems so... Very serious subject. It's a serious I mean, subject to the people that... Right. Is annoying too. I understand that. I just feel funny talking about dogs and roosters. <laughs> um, the barking dog ordinance. How is it determined, Michael or Jim? If 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 somebody has a barking dog yeah. next to them that's annoying them, are they just encouraged to work with their neighbors, or is there some sort of enforcement of the barking dog ordinance? The, the barking dog ordinance involves both code enforcement and the police department. And you can, in fact, uh, remove the dog uh, under the current ordinances if, if it gets to the point of, of you know, total uh, uh, nuisance. And is there measurement by decibels There's no specific or decibels. Uh, is it durational? Uh, no. Okay. So there's no, there's no measurement of you know, a barking dogs? Quite barking? frankly, in, in most instances, you know, we, we've never had to prosecute anyone. Uh, we have had folks when, you know, when we've dealt with that who realize there's a problem and they have to deal with it, and they've dealt with it. Okay. Thank you. And, and go ahead, Caitlin. Oh, just so if somebody was to call and complain about a rooster, we're not adding anything ordinances. We're just going to refer to existing ordinances 
to kind of handle the situation? No, there's, there's absolutely no way to handle them under the existing ordinances. Uh, well, we will it, simply say, we're sorry, we can't help you. Okay, I was just curious as to what it meant by, you know, the disturbing the peace and the dog ordinance. You would have to modify the existing ordinance to, to, to add roosters and make some sort of criteria, um, a duration, uh, X number of complaints, and then the per you'd have to come up with something, they'd have to do something about it. If, if I might go ahead, Mike. If you, I think if you read the disturbing the peace in its whole context, it refers to a person disturbing the peace. Uh, so it, it does not extend to. Is my recollection correct, Caitlin? What? Is my recollection correct? I don't. The you, vote. I'm not reading. Oh, okay. It, no, I'm, yeah, reading, I'm reading the order from the planning board that says to make amendments and. That's what I'm when we looked at this issue with the several citizens who complained, what we discovered, my recollection we discovered, is that the disturbing the peace only applies to people disturbing the peace and not the animals. Uh, Sarah and then Ann. <clears throat> I have a suggestion. Maybe we should refer this to the Ordinance Committee to explore. I know it's already been there, but maybe they could briefly explore some small amendment to an existing ordinance that might say dogs, roosters, and rabbits, or whatever, or, or some tweak that would make it so somebody could do something if they were annoyed enough, but not have to draft an entire new ordinance. Would that be annoying to the Ordinance Committee? I, <laughs> before the Ordinance Committee responds. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll let you know if you're barking up the wrong tree. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that's an excellent idea, Sarah, and all kidding aside, I think if you live in a neighborhood such as mine where the lots are smaller, you would not necessarily expect there to be roosters crowing next door waking you up at uh, an early hour. Uh, certainly I also uh, value our agricultural heritage and the, the farming that goes on now, so I wouldn't want to interfere with that, but I think it would make some sense to refer this to the Ordinance Committee. I thank the Chairman and <laughs> sure, they have very high expectations. <laughs> All right, maybe better. Before this degenerates further, uh, do we have a motion? Uh, yes, Jessica. I, I move that we uh, refer item 64 2011 rooster review request back to the ordinance committee. Second. <laughs> All, yes, Caitlin, yes. If we're voting no to referring it to the ordinance committee, essentially, Nothing happens, and roosters get to live freely within the town. <laughs> uh, I think that's correct. Okay, just wanted to be. No, that's a fair question. Any other questions or discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion. To, to send it to, to the send it the ordinance committee. committee yes. Okay, six in favor. Oh, all slowly. Here. Okay, all those opposed. <laughs> okay, motion carries six to one. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> I, I would note for the record that the three members of the Ordinance Committee sort of half-heartedly raised yes. their hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank uh, you. He did. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Item 65-2011. Uh, this is a group use request. The United States Coast Guard sector of New England is requesting the use of the green in Fort Williams Park uh, next to Portland Headlight for a change of command ceremony with a reception to follow on Friday, June 24, 2011. The noon reception request includes a request for permission to serve beer and wine. And as our notes indicate, the last time such permission was granted was on August 1, 1983. Was that for the National Governor's Convention? Uh, and the Fort Williams Advisory Commission has recommended approval. Um, are there any questions about this request? Or do I have a motion? Move to accept the recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Okay. Is there a second? A second. And the motion has been made and seconded to approve this request. Uh, any further discussion or questions? Oh, yes, Mike. I just have one comment. I would like to thank Lieutenant Beck for being with us this evening, just in case you did have any questions. Thank okay. You. All right. Any other questions or comments? All, right. All those in favor of the motion. Yeah, the motion carries unanimously, and thank you, sir, for coming tonight. Okay. Uh.
Okay, item 66-2011, this is a, uh, another Fort Williams Park group use request for a wedding reception. Uh, Tucker Jordan is requesting the use of the green in Fort Williams Park next to the Portland Headlight for a wedding reception on Saturday, June 4th, 2011. The request includes permission to set up on the previous day and to take down a tent on the following day. Uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Commission recommended to Mr. Jordan that he consider a different location at the picnic shelter and the adjacent area instead of the green. And we have here tonight, uh, yes, oh, I'm sorry. Before we begin the presentation, Caitlin. Um, because the person making the request is my brother, I'm going to have to ask to recuse myself from this item on the agenda. Okay, I think that's appropriate. Uh, so we'll see you at the next item. Caitlin. Yes, do I, we need to have I a believe we have to vote on that. Okay. Is there a motion? I move that we accept uh, Caitlin Jordan's uh, request to be recused from the Jordan request for Fort Williams Park. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay. Carries unanimously. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jordan. Good evening. Um, Mark Tibbetts with uh, A Plus uh, Party Rental is here with me tonight to, in case you have any questions on how long it will take to set the tent up and take it down. And um, just to let you know, he's uh, done this previously for the Coast Guard, and from what I understand, we'll be doing it again for them this year. So if you have any questions about the tent, the procedure, how much time he needs, and whatnot, he's more than happy to entertain that. Um, I guess, to just to start off, I would like to thank everybody for giving me the time to come up here and see you tonight. Um, uh, the, the timeline that I have um, would be set forth as in the paperwork that you have in front of you. Um, we plan to have a rehearsal dinner um, Friday night at the picnic shelter area and then to use that time to decorate the tent and whatnot after uh, Mark has, has uh, set it up. Um, <clears throat> on Saturday, the wedding reception takes place between 2 to 8 o'clock um, in, the, in the hours of the day, in the afternoon. And then Sunday uh, morning, the tent can be um, taken down. From what I understand, is as early as possible. Yeah. Um, at this point, uh, I would like to make this as a proposal as in the, in the effect that the town could use this as a pilot project, if you will, of some nature to work the kinks out if, um, if you wanted to in the future look at make, generating revenue by allowing people to come into the fort and um, use the aesthetics that the coastline and the lighthouse offers for their, for their weddings and receptions. And I personally, which is why I want to have it there, I think it would be a great opportunity for the town to not only have a well-standing family um, in the town to work with in case there is anything that arises that you don't like, that you'd like to see differently, um, and to move, to move through it as we go. Um, the catering, um, if you want to know, will be done by Jay Richardson and Dwayne as Dorian. Um, Jay formerly owned Casco Bay Lobster Bakes and is now coming out to try to get that summer business back up and running. He owns the uh, Stone Works next to the Lincoln Cemetery. Um, other than that, um, the other avenue to look at would be if the town wanted to offer, uh, if this was to go forward, offer electricity um, to, the, to the event, such as for lighting or um, band, and that this would be a good opportunity for the town to see how much electricity would be drawn and to budget that into anybody that wants to generate a proposal for, for the future. If you'll note, um, and I'm sorry the pictures are so small, uh, the green area, I'm sure we're all familiar with where the green area is, it runs parallel to the coastline, directly off to the right-hand side of the headlight. Um, SMCC gets $3,000 this year to rent out that area um, by, their, by the university, by the college there, to generate revenue for their own, their own school and their own property. Um, so when you take into consideration what they're getting for that, I'm sure people would be more than willing to pay that price for Portland Headlight, and you'd get more attention for it. Um, 
the green the green area is very is very long and very well accommodating to both the tent size that we want to put up the party size that we want to have and allow people that come to enjoy the park to not have to worry about whether they're going to get smothered or they're going to their time at the park is going to is going to get ruined um, the next picture shows a shot of the cemetery from as far back as you can stand in on the green section and then up close on the as you can see on the back corner the the head white is just fully visible from this area and it's just well it's it's a prime location um, your next picture was the picnic shelter which is a suggested area by the Fort Williams committee and as you can see you can't see the coast you can't see the water and you can't at all see um, Portland head white and I just um, as much as I appreciate their time and effort that they put into and allowing me to come and speak, um, I think the town would be losing um, on a good business opportunity by, by moving forward and having that be the recommended area um, for anybody else. If, I, you know, if, if you turn down the proposal that I have tonight, that people would be coming to, to pay for that, for that section. Um, the next picture, the next few pictures are shot directly in front of the head white. And the head white is not at all complete, at all visible. Um, your third picture on page three has a small little arrow there that'll show you where the head white is, and it's just barely visible. And that's taken um, just this week with no foliage. And then the next slot, next picture would um, would actually show the you see the picnic shelter in the background. And for all intents and purposes of my of my wedding, it's that's just not. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't be willing as somebody coming into the town to pay, to pay a premium to, to get married there. Not that it's not an, a nice area, but that's just... Um, as, as you can see on the next few slides, that's another... Um, if you get up close to the picnic shelter, you can see the fort. But again, that is without any... I mean, you can see the, the headlight, but again, that is without any foliage brought in, which will be coming around in, in the month of June, July, and definitely August and September. The next two at the bottom um, already, already show that you have porta potties on site if the town wishes that there needs to be more, more facilities for accommodating that, that, uh, accommodating that amount of crowd, then bringing, bringing them in is not, in, bring more Facilities in is not is not that big of a deal or, or that big of a problem. It's a phone call away. Um, I'm in a, the slide just before that shows um, in the color of yellow the roads lined out on the back side of the back side of the fort. Now, as many years as I've been involved with the fire department, that is a very wide road area. That if God forbid everything anything was to happen um, with the headlight we still have at you, if you parked cars in one in a single file along that road you'd still have access for the fire trucks to get in and lay our five inch diameter hose down to bring water to the lighthouse so parking if an issue um, cars can just pull in there and park and they'll be out of the way people won't have to look at them visitors to the park won't won't have to search around for, for a parking spot if t-ball or baseball is going on that day all, all the waiting reception cars will be out of sight, out of mind. Do you have a question for uh, Dr. Kinsara? Yeah. Yes. Is the space you're thinking of, like if I'm driving my car right toward the Portland headlight on the right? Directly, low line directly on, the, yep, where all the, the uh, So it's not up are. high where people fly kites. It's, it's no. over to the right. Yep, to the, so to the right of the roundabout. Okay, so you Which can park the, cars in that dirt drive in that dirt parking lot <coughs> by, where the people park for the soccer. If if wanted to, but I was suggesting those back roads where the cars would be out of the way, um, because the Fort the Fort Williams committee that one of their concerns was um, at a at a, a wedding population of a hundred plus, you'd be running into a, a parking issue and people visiting the fort would be then searching for, it'd be kind of like pulling into Kettle Cove and trying to find a parking spot when everybody realizes you can park there and walk down Crescent Beach and not pay to get into the beach to the state park. Tucker, did you have a chance to finish your 
uh, presentation? Were you all set? Um, I, I've kind of run out of slides, so. Okay, all right. I'd be, I'd be willing to entertain any questions okay. or. All right, uh, and we also have tonight uh, Bill Nicholson from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, so I, I think we'd like to hear from him. But before Tucker sits down, does anybody have any questions for Tucker? Probably just one item to clarify, not yeah. a question. Uh, your proposal is that there will not be alcohol here at the wedding, right? That, so that is correct. That's, I, my family doesn't, doesn't drink. I have no interest in, I've seen my cousins when they do, and I'd like to, <laughs> I'd like to enjoy my wedding, so. We um, we have no we have no intention of even right. even if it's held off off site at Billy Bamford Strawberry Fields, right. um, have no interest in having alcohol anyway. Thanks, uh, Jessica. I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, on Friday at the rehearsal dinner, what did you anticipate the numbers being then? At the rehearsal dinner, mm -hmm. well, I have no idea, ma'am. That's okay. And with a, in your. Uh, uh, your uh, proposal, you mentioned 300 guests. How many automobiles are you thinking that will be um, coming in? Oh. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, uh, we, first of all, it's not even picked up on the record, but Jordan, uh, excuse me, Tucker, Yes. Would you agree that that would be about the number? I would. I would agree that that would be about. The can number. you can you restate that number? So I everybody? I will re I will restate that I sent out 300 invitations and I've been getting declines back left and right. So I, <laughs> I'm not familiar with what the approximate guest is. That's why I have 250 at this time. Um, 300 was the original proposal because that's what I mailed out. Um, so would you say that might be around 100 to 150 cars? I would be willing to say 100 or 150. Okay, which might include the, <coughs> the caterers and others who are working at the wedding. I would include that in, in that as well. And I'll go buy a lottery ticket if there's more because I was way wrong and I can't be wrong. Okay. All right, Jessica? Um, and on Sunday morning, what was the time frame for dismantling all of the, the tents and all of the other equipment? Well, that's, that's, the, that's the question at hand is if if the town council and the town wants to move forward in pursuing the, uh, the attempt of, of generating revenue, what timeline would the town like to, like to see it as set forth? If you would like it out there as soon as possible, um, I would refer back to um, Mr. Tibbetts to tell you how soon he can, he can get down there or on special occasions of having the tents at Fort Williams. You see, what I'm, you see where I'm going with that? I can't speak for, for what you folks would have in mind or what he's capable of doing. I thought I heard Mr. Tibbetts say around 9 in the morning on Sunday. Um, and I suppose if he wanted to pursue this and there was a desire to have something earlier, we could have that conversation. I, I don't see why it wouldn't hurt to have a conversation. Okay. Any other questions? Jessica. Well, I, I was wondering if you were, was there a fee involved that you were proposing to pay the town for this? Well, um, I would propose that I've, I have budgeted in and already spent a couple thousand dollars on a videographer and, a, and two photographers. If the town would like access to any of that footage for any promotion that they see fit, I would be more than willing to, to turn that over. What you folks deem as... Um, you would like to see to generate revenue, I think, would be up to you. So your offer, just to make sure I understand, would be that if the town were interested in doing this, you would make available photographs or videos for us to use for promoting any, this as a venue? Any, anything that you, well, I, just only that, that would be my impression of being a guinea pig, would be that you would want. And since there's no alcohol, we won't have any... Uh, um, unruly behavior that we would have to worry about in these videos. That would, that would also be uh, fairly guaranteed, I would hope. Jim. Uh, because the uh, Fort Williams Advisory Council um, works with the town council, uh, and they've already looked at this request, I, I really would love to help Bill Nickerson, the chair, come and speak to us about the, about the, the workshop that they conducted where they had some, some points of view that were concerns, but nothing, I think the important point for all of us to understand is that this is on our radar screen and we are doing the due diligence and the background work 
outside of this request to come forward at some point with a wedding uh, procedure or policy, not unlike the 13 uh, requests that we have on the table for food vending at Fort Williams. But all of the pre-work that was done prior to going out to bid is the good work that the, that the, uh, the Fort Williams Advisory Council is doing. So I'd like to hear from Bill if we could because I think that might engage in more conversation because they have uh, asked Tucker questions in, a, in the workshop and some of those questions have been answered here a little bit, but there are still questions that, that I think need to get resolved. Um, and I, 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 you know, it's, you're the chair, you decide, but I think Bill ought to be asked to speak at some point soon, <coughs> rather than more questions from the audience. Uh, yeah, that's fine with me. Uh, Tucker, if you wouldn't mind just taking a seat, and uh, if we could hear from Bill Nickerson, and I'm sure we're gonna have more questions for you that's as well, no, so please don't go. No problem. All right. Uh, uh, thank you for coming tonight, Bill. I'm Bill Nickerson. Good evening, everybody. Um, we, we, Tucker made his presentation at, at a, one of our normal monthly meetings, and then in the interim, we had a workshop and discussed it in uh, pretty significant detail. And our determination was that timing is unfortunate um, in the first instance because we're working, as you know, on a on a uh, master plan, revising the master plan, and um, looking at ways of generating revenue will be part of our master planning process. Something that clearly we've talked about is the idea of having wedding receptions, um, but we feel that there needs to be a plan in place, maybe a venue in place, um, as opposed to having weddings all over the fort. Uh, what we'd like, I think I speak for the committee in saying that what we'd like to do is take a look in, through the master planning process at all of the different buildings, venues, et cetera, within the fort and try to come up with that area where we think wedding receptions can be held. They, are, they, they do generate noise, they do de generate commotion, um, and try to find a place where they can be held without being intrusive upon the experience of those who are visiting the lighthouse. And um, we felt that Number one, tents have only been allowed uh, down on that green for three separate types of events, the Beach to Beacon, the uh, Coast Guard Change of Command Ceremony, and the Governor's Conference back in the early 80s. So to open it up beyond those three very restrictive um, kinds of events then opens up, you know, who knows what. And, um, and conversely, the uh, tents have only been allowed up near the picnic shelter. Um, adjacent in that area, elevated area above the picnic, by the picnic shelter, which also provides parking. Um, you know, there's the road that can go up and around so cars can be parked up there as well. So we felt that it was premature to allow uh, tents to be put up on the green because once it's been done for one, it becomes more difficult to if there's another wedding reception request or even some other kind of a reception request that doesn't involve Beach to Beacon, the governors, or the Coast Guard, then it's hard to say no with everything you do. And until we have a plan in place, we felt that um, we should restrict the wedding. We're not saying the wedding can't happen. I mean, or the reception can't happen. And I, to my knowledge, there haven't been receptions there before. There have only been ceremonies. Um, so we're not saying it couldn't happen, we're just saying at this point we think it should be up near the shelter. And there's, there's the parking, as I mentioned, there are utilities. Um, Tucker's planning a lobster bake, there's a fire pit up there. Um, whereas to have a lobster bake down on the green, depending upon which way the wind is blowing, you know, those generate smoke, which can create you know, a potential problem for visitors to the fort. So we kind of looked at it both ways and said you know, the, the advantages of the shelter are the utilities being available, the fire pit parking uh, can be on that level. The precedent is there for allowing tents. Um, it's still not a bad view. I mean, I was up there today and, I mean, granted, all the leaves aren't on the trees, but I mean, you can still see the ocean in the distance from the shelter area. The further back you get, um, that's not so possible. But, and the noise that would be generated from the music and the patrons um, would be muted somewhat by having it up in that location as opposed to having it 
down on the green where it would be adjacent to the lighthouse and the southern path walk, uh, goes along that area. So um, those were essentially the reasons we came up with as to why we felt that's where the, loca the appropriate location was. And um, so I'd be happy to you know, go into that in more depth if necessary. Uh, other questions for Bill? Frank. Just two questions. So just to be clear, you're not objecting to the notion of a wedding in the park. It's the location. That's right. Like Right. Secondly, then the um, um, I haven't studied this a long time, obviously. But when I look at that green, it's sort of the perfect location in my mind. And, and so I'd like to get your reaction to it in the sense that it's isolated. When I've been down there, there's rarely anybody on the field. It's flat, perfectly yeah. flat for yeah. 10. Um, and with the mound, the, um, I shouldn't know the names of these terms, but the, the land that goes up behind it, which seemed to be able to block sound and, and sort of isolate it and, and give it both privacy as well as not intruding on other people's activities there. Recognize that it's near the lighthouse, right. but from the standpoint of the rest of the park, it would seem to be quite, a, quite an isolated event. Mm -hmm. Plus, I didn't think about the, the parking using the road coming up from the back to keep the cars away. So mm -hmm. what's, given those factors, why don't you think it's a good location? Well, we just thought the green is, um, it's the closest to the lighthouse. The lighthouse is where visitors tend to aggregate, particularly people from away, um, who come in to see the lighthouse and, and enjoy the sound of the ocean and, and walk, walk around it. And so um, with bands and people and so forth in that area, it's going to take the, the experience that those people would have if they came at a time other than when this wedding was occurring or any other event like that. Um, would be different. So it, it just, I, we thought it was intrusive. I, see, I, see, I guess the, the point I'd make, I guess, is I hadn't thought about it from that perspective. I was thinking about it from town residents' perspective. Yeah, no, we were thinking about it from the lighthouse yeah, visitors' yeah. perspective. Because from town residents' perspective, we probably don't spend a lot of time right around the lighthouse. Yeah. It probably is the ideal location. Right. But from a visitor from away, it might not be. So I guess the question of, you know, where's our priority? Well, uh, Sarah. <coughs> I guess it, my picture is that the people would park, walk down the sidewalk, go off into the field, and it would be, I guess it matters where the tent is. Is it like right next to the lighthouse, or is it set pretty far away? Because, I mean, they're not going to be sort of milling out around the lighthouse, presumably, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And so whatever the start time is, I can't remember on Saturday, two it's 2 o'clock. So from 1... 30 to quarter of two, or whatever, however long it takes guests to quarter, you know, 145 to two. Yes, that would be a big flow in front and a mildly disruptive, but that's like a 15 or 20 minute window. And then I think, you know, Tucker and his family could do a good job of sort of keeping them in the field. Like it's a big field. And if there's a tent and porta potties and everything is clearly centered there, I don't envision the, there would be much drift back to the lighthouse, maybe, right? That's sort of how I'm picturing, maybe a photograph of the bride and groom, but I don't picture sort of this mayhem around the, the lighthouse, so I, well, maybe I'm picturing it incorrectly. It wasn't so much the people milling the around the lighthouse, there. It was, it's, the, it's, it's the music, yeah. um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's that kind of thing. The smoke, potentially, from the lobster bake, depending upon which way the wind is blowing. Um, so, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder, if that's a nuisance or that's kind of mm -hmm. charming. Yeah, Jim. Um, a, a couple of um, a couple of points. I mean, uh, I had suggested uh, through through Caitlin to her brother that they might consider another location, and one of the locations in the master plan that has been uh, bantered about is at the end of the soccer field, which gets less use uh, at that time of the year, and it's perched up high enough so it does have some views. That's one of the pictures that he's provided to us here. And it obviously doesn't provide quite the panoramic view of the lighthouse that Tucker is looking for. It's actually, Which pictures if have you, If you look at the, um, the, the suggested near soccer field picture, and then you have, you actually have a view there that is not quite as picturesque, if, if you will. So the top right one on the second yeah, page? Yeah, top right. I don't think top um, mountain. But so that was one of the suggestions. The other suggestion I made to Caitlin is in terms of the numbers, that why not bus them in from the, the Cape Elizabeth High School parking lot? So you don't have 100 vehicles 
entering that place between one and two and then exiting after the wedding or you know, starting to peter out of the place at six or six thirty or seven, depending upon how how well the entertainment goes. Um, it, it just seems to me that there are a lot of logistics around this, and and I think that that's one of the fears of the advisory commission. It's obviously it should be a fear of ours as well as we give permission to this, but the. The, the, the issue that's also on the table is that Tucker has proposed this as a chance for us to learn about having a wedding in this park. While an opportunity like this doesn't come down all the time, it's certainly if there's a way to figure out how to do this that it's not going to interfere with the general public's access to this beautiful park on a weekend in June and to work out the logistics so that Bob Malley and his people aren't spending their time managing a wedding on a weekend. Um, and we deal with the parking and the access issue with 100 vehicle potential. It just seems to me there may be a possibility here. My concern is that we've been in this discussion with, with, our, with really our help, our advisory group, to get the details done. And unfortunately, the timing, as, as Bill said, is, is just sort of out of sync. However, I'd love to see us try it, but I, I want to charge Tucker for the use of it. And what learnings we get, we'll get. But I don't believe that it should be done for nothing. And I also don't believe, because he has film and all this other stuff, that we can access sometime later. I don't think that that should be the, the town's position. If we're going to let you use it, we're going to charge you for it. And if you're going to have to have a police detail, you're going to pay for that. And I also think that, that, this, that there are a lot of other details here that, frankly, um, I have concerns about. A wedding from 2 to 8 o'clock. It's really 1 to maybe 9 when you think about how weddings operate. So it, it's just, it, it's very unfortunate because the timing is wrong because I think this group is doing good work. But I also see an opportunity. But I don't know. Do we make a recommendation to the, you know, to vote here to give it back to the advisory council or commission to actually work the details out with Tucker to make it happen? I mean, I'm just very concerned about all the details. Okay. But before I go to Ann, then to Sarah, then to Frank, are you then willing to consider the wedding location at the green? Then is that, or you're still not sure? Well. I'm willing, to, I'm willing to consider it provided we give the right parameters around the details. Because I just don't want carte blanche do it the way you want to do it. It's got to be done. We have to have some control. We have control over the beach to beacon. We'll have control over everything else that happens in that park. And I don't want to lose control over this just because it happens to be in front of us. Okay. And? Um. This, this is a difficult issue because it involves something that's very important to Mr. Jordan, but it also involves something that's very important to the town, which is Fort Williams Park. Um, I, my concerns are that I, I've been very pleased by the way the town has handled the whole vendors issue, the food vendors issue, in that we've developed some rules, developed some parameters, developed the fees, developed everything about trash and everything else. Um, we're getting proposals and we're sorting through them and um, I think it's important to do planning first, set the parameters, set the rules like we've done with food vendors. Um, I'm not disposed to overrule the Fort Williams Advisory Commission. I think they've thought very carefully about it and they've tried to offer an option that would be sort of a middle course. Um, I think it's poor public policy for us to just zip into this too fast. Uh, it would set a precedent. I think it would be difficult for us to refuse others and that we would leave ourselves open if we then did refuse others to say we're cutting special deals for sort of last minute uh, proposals. Um, I look at the benefit to the town 
and I haven't heard any fees proposed. We even charge a fee for the picnic shelter. Um, I don't see us getting any fees. I understand the, getting the videography and the photos, but to me that is not a, a big enough benefit to outweigh the, uh, the risks to the town. Um, and my concerns there are if people are coming in the back gate for, to come in you know, through the back way, if, if they were going to come in and park that way, how do we police that so we don't have other people coming in through that gate? And then we get into uh, people at the door, you know, are you a guest, are you not a guest, whatever, maybe we have a police detail, I don't know. Um, I do think there's an issue of with the lobster bake of smoke maybe blowing the wrong way. I think there's the issue of parking. I think there's the issue of the, the view from uh, the people who are visiting the, the lighthouse area, sort of heading straight towards the lighthouse. Um, Frank mentioned people who uh, live in town versus visitors. Um, I do not know a lot of people, myself included, take our visitors who always come in the summer, they always want to go out there. Um, and I think it would have an impact uh, on the view. I think there would be noise from the music. Uh, I am not sure how the electricity would work out. It, uh, they would need electricity for the band, it says, so I'm not sure if we'd be paying for that or not paying for that, but um, there's some issues there with cords and how do you access it? Do you have to set it up overhead, run it along the ground, whatever? Um, I think there would be uh, an impact even though it's to the right, over to the right as you walk up to the headlight. I think there's a whole section of the cliff walk that runs right along the ocean there. And I think there are lots of people who like to walk along the cliff, cliff walk and have sort of a peaceful enjoyment, peaceful experience of looking at the ocean. Um, and I think there could be some sort of mixing of, of crowds there, you know, whatever. Um, I think the fort is about relatively passive recre recreation and relatively peaceful enjoyment of the fort. Um, so I'd be concerned about that. I'd also be concerned about the impacts on town staff uh, in terms of public works, the, the uh, volunteers, the park rangers, public safety. Not to say that eventually all these things couldn't be worked out, but the timing is unfortunately very difficult. This is a lot to work out. And for all those reasons, uh, I, I'm not supportive. And, you know, I'm not, I'm just going to say right out straight, I'm not supportive. I'm sorry, but I'm not supportive of doing this at this time. I think it, uh, the, the costs and risks to the town and to users of the Ford are not outweighed by benefits to the Ford or the town that I can see at this point. So regretfully, I will not be able to support this proposal. Uh, thank you, Ann. Sarah? I disagree. <laughs> um, my feeling is this. I think it was two years ago we, the community gathered together in the cafeteria in the high school because there was a shortfall in the school budget and they were asked, you know, what are we going to do about this? How are, you gonna, how are we going to address this? Do you want to raise taxes, raise revenue, so forth? And my recollection is that every single group there and we had the papers plastered around the, 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 the wall. Every single person at the top of their list said, please start generating revenue from the fort. It was a very, very impassioned um, message, I thought, from the citizenry, and th that represented many demographics in town. And I speak to people on a frequent basis who are highly frustrated that they feel that we've done nothing toward that end. Now, I know we're, that we're trying, and I commend you guys for the... the, the food vendors, and we are moving forward, but I think people feel frustrated that it's going slowly. I see this as an amazing opportunity to dip our toe in this whole event, because the truth is, to really generate revenue, we have to hold events there. That's just the bottom line. We're not going to make that much money off food vendors. Are we going to have events there, or are we not? If we are, they're going to take place in that field. It's the optimal place. It's no mistake that Tucker has chosen that spot. I don't think that Bob Malley would approve having it on the soccer field because it would tear up the field a little bit, and we, that's heavily used for sports. The picnic shelter is great for more informal lunch things, but if you want to have a high-end, expensive event, it's going to take place in that field. So I think a fundamental decision we're being asked to make here is, 
Are we willing to sacrifice or partially compromise a few visitors' experience down to the lighthouse? And if you weigh the, 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 the money coming in, that's a few dollars maybe spent at our gift shop. And we're only talking about maybe four or five days out of the summer where if somebody were allowed to host um, a, an event, maybe a pretty major event, that could bring in a lot of money. So I think we should be looking at this and we should be experimenting with it. And I think that Tucker's proposal is a great way to see. Maybe it'll be a catastrophe. I give him credit for, for staking his wedding day on it and I commend his bride-to-be for being flexible enough. It might be horrible. Maybe the electricity won't work. Maybe it'll be a disaster. That would teach us a lot. Then we could put this to bed. We don't want to have events there. And it might be spectacular with very little impact on the town. I mean, we, had, we accepted the Beach to Beacon, right? We didn't know much about it. It's turned into a huge thing, right? People would say it's fairly inconvenient for the town. The town loves it. We had events in the park in the town I grew up in. People loved it. It was charming. You'd go by, there'd be a tent there. You'd say, that's so nice. Someone's getting married. So I feel eager <coughs> to give this a shot. And if it doesn't work, we'll say no. If it does work in terms of the precedent, then we say, this is great. We loved it. And we're working on the process to make this become something that people can have more access to. We need a month or something to work it out. But I see this as an opportunity that sometimes you have to be spontaneous and give it a shot. OK. Uh, Frank, and then I'll turn back to Mr. Nickerson. Frank? Bill, um, at the workshop you had, you had public comments. I'm just curious what no. Oh, there's no public comments? No. Have you had any letters or any I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear your question. Were there public comments? I was wondering if there any public comments on this. Um, was the workshop open to the public? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, secondly, the location of the tent, maybe. Oh. Frank, can I interrupt you for a second? I would be more than willing to turn over a email I received from Mr. Carter and just take myself completely out of the picture. He was um, mortified that the town would turn around and say no to somebody's family in an aspect that developed the town and started it the way it did. Now, I didn't encourage it, I didn't ask him, but from somebody being completely outside of the picture and that was there on his on his own means to talk about the food vendor, mm -hmm. um, there is there is a lot of public comment out there and there are a lot of people that that feel that and I'm not trying to use the fact that I'm a Jordan and I'm a direct descendant of Reverend Robert Jordan that settled this town. But that there are a lot of people that feel that um, if the town is going to go and have a wedding there that right there is precedence alone that the first person that you allowed to do it was somebody that founded the town and started it. And that is a whole other ball game in itself and an anger that you guys can yeah. use to spin. It, Sorry for interrupting. No, that's OK. And if I may, uh, I, I really appreciate the fact that you have made this proposal to the town. And I agree with a lot of what Ann said. And I agree, frankly, with a lot of what Sarah Lennon said. Um, and I think because it's you, I think we're taking this seriously, but at the end of the day, I'm evaluating the merits of this proposal, regardless of the name on the application. Um, and I guess I'll just state my view on this is I just don't think, feel like we're quite ready uh, for this proposal. And I think it's, I, I hope someday we will have weddings down on the green, perhaps. But I just think the issue needs to be vetted a bit more. And you, you know, there's something called, uh, uh, paralysis through analysis, uh, but I, I, I think the Fort Williams Advisory Commission is moving the ball forward on this idea. It may be that a year from now we're holding a 100-person <laughs> wedding down on the green, but I, I just am not comfortable where things stand now trying to pursue this. And you know, with my apologies, uh, I'm not planning to support the proposal. But Jessica, did you have a question or a comment? No, I, I just wanted to comment. Um, I. Um, Certainly appreciate, Tucker, all the work you've put into your proposals and the time you've spent with the Advisory Commission and also the Advisory Commission's time. Um, I also have to say that I will not favor your proposal, and I regretfully it's your wedding, and I, but I have to say timing is everything. I really don't feel that the uh, Advisory Commission nor is the town ready. Um, and I'd like to comment on Councillor Lennon's comments. I mean, the Beach to Beacon, there was a tremendous amount of planning that went into that before it ever occurred. And although, and I was at that school board uh, meeting at the high school, um, 
School board parents, yes, suggested that there be weddings at the fort, but they also suggested there be parking fees at the fort, and then the town voted them down. So we have to be very careful. I think that our experience with our vendor proposals has gone very well. Um, hopefully we will have weddings, but there, there's so many logistical issues, um, and we don't, we don't want to, we want to have things well <laughs> planned. And if we jump into this, we, we would set a precedence not only for weddings, but for other events, like other kinds of concerts. I mean, there are many things that have been proposed that could be held at the fort. And again, these require tremendous planning and success to be successful. And we would want it to be successful. And again, I, I just have to say, I don't think we're ready. So I, I'm very sorry, but I don't think we're ready. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the council? Uh, I, I was Bill, you, I'm sorry, Bill and, and Councillor Lennon's comments and about um, putting our toe in the water. And we haven't eliminated the idea. In fact, we thought we might have a wedding a reception or two there. We were thinking it would be up near the picnic shelter. It would be maybe 100 people, you know, that we would start smaller and in a contained area that we know and that we know has um, the utilities and the other things that are needed that is away from the lighthouse and, and, and use that as our learning experience and then decide where these should migrate to if they, sh you know, and, and, and in the context of maybe having a few smaller receptions um, in, the, in, the, in conjunction with the uh, master plan, look at, you know, I, I'm just throwing out the idea, maybe the highest and best use of the athletic field isn't as an athletic field, if, you know, we're trying to, generate revenue out of Fort Williams. Maybe that is space that's too valuable. And I'm, that's my personal, I'm just, I was up there today just looking around and, and it's elevated. And if you cut down some sumac bushes, um, you, you know, it's not next to the lighthouse, but you can see out over the ocean. And um, so there's still a water view and it's away from the lighthouse. And, um, and so I just think it's going back to what several of you have said it, it's it, part of it is the planning and and being ready to do it right when we decide to do it and not leap off a cliff and then set a precedent and wish we'd never done it so All right, thank you bill uh tucker did you want to well, have the last word so to well, speak if i if i may just have the opportunity sure. to dr address some of the issues that the sure. council's brought up because my understanding is that the workshop that I was at, I was granted permission to move forward and have the reception at the fort at the picnic shelter, correct? So my proposal is, is not that I'm asking for permission to have the wedding. I've already got that. I'm asking for permission to have it on the green. I'm asking for the town council to take that into consideration that people aren't going to want to pay $3,000 to have it on the picnic shelter with that cement um, building in front of them when they can go down to SMCC and have the entire coastline and um, access to both Bug Light and Spring Point Light. Um, if I may, um, timing, they say timing isn't right. I, I brought this proposal to the Fort Williams Advisory Committee in appropriate time. So this has all been in the works. It's not like I just jumped into this, unfortunately. You know, I, I don't know how to explain why time has gone by, but I brought this forward. Um, everybody is, you know, people's concern is that it's an eyesore to the town, or it's an eyesore to people coming in. Half of my invitations are to people in the town, and the other half is to people visiting the town. So if they were coming in, they were going to be, they'd be coming to the, they'd be coming to the lighthouse anyway because, um, if you got, if the decision is no, my wedding is in kibosh, there's nothing that's going to get terminated. I'm, I'm going to go down to two lights and, and have it in Billy Bamford's strawberry field. I mean, my wedding is going to happen. I'm kind of giving the town the opportunity to say, okay, who's going to pay $3,000 for the very first wedding and have it be completely ruined? And then a whole other can of worms opens up as, oh, I was promised all this by the town of Cape Elizabeth and they didn't deliver or it didn't go the way I wanted it to. Um, the parking issue, I brought the parking up to have it on the access road. 
I never mention anything about being a back gate open. Um, as, as a firefighter, I would think that would be very hazardous to, the, to both the town and, and the ability to get fire equipment back there. People would come in and navigate to that going up through where the old officer buildings are. Um, the, the mention of the fire pit at the pick and shelter, there's in a, in, the, in a lobster and steak bake, there is no fire pit needed. It's all propane steamers and, and a grill. Um, and there's no, and if there is any steam or smoke generated with the location of the green, it's, it's down in almost like a valley, like a mountain. Everything's going to blow out to sea. Um, the red box, and I'm sorry that it's so small, the red box that's on your picture from Google Earth is drawn to scale. People would not be inconvenienced. The tent would not be stretched all the way to the road that goes to the cliff. And quite... You could just try to wrap it up. I'm... Yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot... There, I'm sorry, yes. No, that's okay. Uh, I mean, I... Five, five days out of, out of the summer for the town to generate, I mean, some serious cash to help out with shortfall, I would think would be more than a willing inconvenience to people that are coming to the, coming to the fort and coming to the town. Um, other, other than that, I hey, really we need to wrap it up. If, it, you, I'm I'm sorry. To that's okay. Take uh, I, mean, I, I mean I mean I think we we've, we've we've heard uh, your presentation. We really appreciate all your points. Yep. Is there somebody else who is planning to speak? Yes, actually, I have some. There is a precedent for this if, uh, at a wedding at Fort William because I performed at it. Um, talking about a wedding reception or a wedding ceremony? Wedding ceremony. Well, I, I think that wedding ceremonies are held at Fort Williams well, routinely. Well, was, uh, we were the music, so I, do, okay, I, I guess I misunderstood then. But this was several years ago. Uh, could have been 10 years ago. I've done a couple hundred weddings. I'm in the group. So, uh, no, my understanding is that ceremonies are routinely held at the Fort Williams. They are. Okay. Then I, I, I stand corrected. We were just uh, a ceremony. What's that? Yes, we did the music. Okay, we, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you. All right. Um, I, and with due respect to the applicant, I really do appreciate your yep. presentation, but I think we, I need to call the question. Is, is there a, a motion uh, and a second that we can have final discussion among the council? Is there a motion? Uh, Jessica. Um, I move that we uh, deny Tucker Jordan's request for a wedding reception on the green at Fort Williams. Is there a second? Second. A okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hold on. The motion is to deny it? Correct. Oh. Don't you usually set the motion like what's in the pack? Well, I, 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 I think, yeah, <laughs> I think the, the, the motion is either, I suppose, I was anticipating somebody to make a motion for it or to deny it. So I, okay. if this someone gets voted down, then we'd have a second motion to approve it. Um, I will just, I am planning to vote in favor of this motion to deny, and the, the issue that I'm finding very uncomfortable is I would rather that the Fort Williams Advisory Commission come up with sort of the procedures for how weddings are to operate and be held at the fort, and then we approve those procedures and policies, so then when John Smith or Jane Doe comes along and wants to do something, the issue is, do they comply with the procedure? And then they're not coming to the town council saying, hey, you denied me my, the wedding that I've always dreamed of. And I know that's not what you're doing, Tucker, but I find it a bit uncomfortable, to say the least, to have somebody come up and say, this, this is the way I want to have my wedding. Please approve it, when we haven't quite gotten to the parameters of how this is going to work. And I do hope that someday uh, we will see more weddings and special events happening at the fort. But as, I, as I've said, and I think a lot of us have said, we're not quite ready. Yes. I, I just wanted to confirm that if the motion to deny passes, the Fort Williams recommendation still stands to allow the wedding at the picnic shelter based on the customary picnic shelter rules and the permission to set up the tent. And would that include the, cu include the customary picnic shelter fees? It would also? include cus the customary fees as well. Customary fees, customary rules, everything. Okay. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Um, I, I'm really, I'm going to be very respectful. I apologize. The yeah, it, right, sir, right now, I mean, I just, I, right you, now you're saying no to the green, but not saying no to the wedding. 
Right. That's correct. Okay. Thank, um, thank you. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't, I didn't realize this how the proposal motion. was only about. I think it should location. be. Yeah. This should be okay. in the in the the the, the motion should be clear that the, we're not weighing in on his wedding. All we're saying is what you, what essentially the motion should be. Can he use the green? That, that's correct. My, the, the motion has been made to simply deny the request to use the green as the location, but otherwise that the permission the that's been granted is. But I can do every, I can do anything else I want on the picnic shelter. Well, I, I think you. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, my understanding is that there has. Within the usual. Yeah, that that you're, if you still want to have it at the the picnic shelter in that area, that you would work with town staff and comply with whatever rules there are. Uh, uh, Okay, you know what, I, I, with all due respect, we need to just move this along, and if you have any questions, you can talk to town staff. Frank. Okay, the only final comment I want to make on this is the fact that we are, we are really just deciding the location. That is correct. Because, and all the objections that have been voiced so far, I know, but the objections that have been voiced, whether it's the parking or the disruption or the chaos or the noise and the smoke, it still they don't really apply <laughs> because we're accepting all those factors. All we're, it's approved by the current, the current rules. So all I want, the only thing we're objecting to is the location. And my point is, if we're, really, if we're really serious about generating revenues from the park and having weddings and events there, then we want to maximize those. And the only place we're going to maximize those is at that location on the green, in my opinion. Otherwise, we don't have to change anything because we have rules in effect that permit functions already. So that's no change. I, if yeah, I, yeah. I would respectfully disagree that all the objections that have been expressed, you know, that everything else is the same except for the location because some of the objections I expressed have to do with that location, things about the view and the impact on the cliff walk, things that would not apply okay, to, the, to the, upper, the upper location. Okay. So. And, and Frank, I don't disagree with you that, that perhaps that location would be key to generating, generating significant revenues, and I'm certainly willing to explore that. I'm just not prepared to do that now. Yeah. Jim. Okay, and further on that is that that's part of the master plan and the work that the advisory commission is doing to determine the highest and best use for a wedding venue if, in fact, it fits. And it may be the green. It may be up uh, between the battery and the, and, the, and the field. It could be at the end of the field. There's so many options for them, but that's the work that they're doing. And that's why this is a premature request in many ways for what we ultimately have for a plan. All right, I, I Sorry, think I need, okay, Sarah, one last comment that I'm going to call this question. We need a vote. In addition to weddings, I know there's a lot of eagerness out there to do things like festivals, music festivals, et cetera, in particular MP Altenauer, I know. And so I just would urge us to continue to press this forward and, and accept change, at least in an experimental way. And I know the advisory committee is doing all that, but I think another year for a master plan and so forth, I think we just have to kind of like do some stuff a little bit. I think we have to balance caution and planning with, you know, the Nike ad, let's just do it. So I would just urge us to continue to be yeah. open-minded for opportunities to use the park in different ways. And, and Sarah, I don't think there's anyone that disagrees with that. It's just it's being done deliberate with a lot of thought because it will affect the park for years to come. And that's why we have to do it in a deliberate way. And, and I'm with you. I'd love to do it tomorrow. And this woman that you suggest that does this planning, she's working with the advisory group on some really neat stuff. So I think there's some good things down there. Just We just have to be patient and not go put the cart before the horse. <laughs> All right, I'm going to extra, exercise my prerogative as chair and call the question if that's could, the right term. Could we term, just but repeat the uh, motion? Yes, uh, the motion has been made, uh, I believe, and seconded. by Jessica. Jessica, could you restate your motion? Yes, I, I moved that, that uh, item 66-2011, Tucker Jordan's request for wedding reception on the green at Fort Williams be denied. And that motion did not in any way affect his permissions or application to use the picnic shelter? That's correct. Okay. And that motion was seconded? Mm -hmm. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Okay, so the motion carries four to two. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you for coming tonight, Tucker.
Okay, item 67-2011, acceptance of a drainage easement. The 1175 Shore Road nominee trust has agreed to provide the town a requested drainage easement at 1175 Shore Road. The town staff recommends the drainage easement be accepted with appreciation to the trustees. Do I have a motion? I move we uh, accept 67-2011, the drainage easement of the um, 1175 Shore Road Nominee Trust. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Okay, thank you. The motion carries unanimously. <coughs> Item number 68-2011, the warrant for the school budget validation vote. Uh, the recommendation is the council approve the warrant for the May 10, 2011 school budget validation vote. There will also be a special election on May 10, 2011 to fill the vacancy in the Maine State Senate, resulting from the resignation of Senator Lawrence Bliss. Uh, perhaps, if I may, ask Deborah Lane to just uh, remind the council as to what the uh, warrant would look like. Uh, in your packet, we presented a warrant, uh, again, calling for the school budget validation referendum on Tuesday, May 10th at the high school gymnasium. State law does outline what the school budget validation referendum, the yes-no question, um, as how it should be um, listed. It's do you favor approving the town of Cape Elizabeth school budget for the upcoming school year that was adopted at the latest school budget meeting of the council? Again, that wording is by law. There's a second question I talked to um, Councillor Lennon prior to the meeting as finance chair to see um, if she wanted me to include for council consideration the following non-binding expression of opinion for the consideration of the school board and council. And again, this has been used at, at prior um, elections for the school budget. It would read, I find the school budget adopted at the April 25th, 2011 Town Council School Budget Meeting to be, and the choices would be too high, acceptable, and too low. So that really is the question to whether you want to include uh, that non-binding expression of opinion again on the, uh, the ballot. All right, thank you, Deborah. Uh, do I have a motion? Jessica. I move we accept. Uh, the uh, item 68-2011, the warrant for a school budget validation vote in its entirety. Seconded. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any questions or discussion? And this is the same format as you explained, Deborah, that we've used the last, uh, every year we've done this. Uh, Except the acceptable. Yeah, the, there was slightly different wording on the non-binding question. The first year, I think. Yeah. This, is, this was from the... This is from last year. Last year, year. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, all those in favor of the motion? It carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 69-2011, uh, it is recommended that the council authorize a quick claim deed to the estate of Virginia Wheeland. All taxes, fees, etc., have been paid in full. Do we have a motion? Uh, Ann. I move that the council authorizes a quick claim deed to the estate of Virginia Wheeland. Second. Thank you. The motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Carries unanimously. Thank you. Item 70 2011 Riverside Cemetery Trustees 2011 Work Plan. Uh, we've received a work plan and it is recommended that the council acknowledge receipt of that work plan. Sarah. I move the council acknowledge receipt of the work plan for the Riverside Cemetery trustees. Second. Any discussion? Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that as part of this work plan, they're working on updating the 1993 master plan. And uh, uh, Frank Governale attended the meeting and really want to express appreciation to Frank for working with them uh, on that issue. It's an interesting group. Now and into the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until you live there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Motion's been made and seconded, I believe. Okay. All those in favor of the motion? All right, Darius, thank you. Uh, this is the second opportunity before we go into an executive session for citizens to discuss items that are not on the agenda. Seeing none. Uh, uh, we move then to item number 71-2011. 
Uh, the recommendation here is that in conformance with Title I of the Maine Revised Statutes, Section 405, 6, C, and F, we enter into executive session to discuss land acquisition disposition issues and to review an application for an abatement of taxes due to hardship. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor of the motion. The motion carries. Uh, before we leave, I just want to briefly point out that our next town council meeting will be April 25th, at which time we'll have the public hearing on the proposed budgets. Um, so do we go off here? Yeah. Okay. Not be returning. Yeah, we will not be returning to televised meeting. We will come out after the executive session concludes. Thank you.